What's up YouTube? It's Sarah and I want to do a quick unboxing and uh, first impressions video about the uh, Velo BGN11 battery grip for the Nikon uh, D7200. I purchased this from Amazon. Um, I Honestly, I mean I just was looking to kind of get a little bit of a better deal than the $300 grip available from Nikon considering it's almost a third of the price of the camera. I wanted something a little bit more practical uh, as I probably will upgrade my body to a full frame in the not too distant future. So we'll open it up and we'll see what we have here. Alright, so first thing in a little bit of a pouch here is this is the insert for the AA batteries. Uh, probably not something I'll use a whole ton, but it's probably a good thing to throw in your bag with a, you know, a pack of Duracell or Energizer uh, AA batteries in case you find yourself in a jam. You can get your camera up and running. And we have an instruction manual here. And here's the grip. So I'll get this out of the bubble wrap here. Alright, so we're out of the bubble wrap. Here's the grip. So it looks like it's in, you know, pretty good working order. I've seen some of the cheaper grips come uh, where this grip portion here is loose like it's not fully adhered or rubberized to the plastic. Uh, I do not detect that problem with this grip. It feels pretty solid. Uh, I've got a rubberized bottom here with an inlet for uh, your tripod or your um, a black rapid strap. Uh, looks like we've got like a joystick style rather than uh, the traditional style with the camera. However, that's really not a detriment of any sort. So this is more of a push-button style and this create, uh, behaves more like a joystick and with the center press. I think that's more than uh, adequate. Looks like we have an identical button here, a uh, function button, and then we'll give these quick, quick spin. Uh, I do like the tactile feedback on these. They feel good. They don't feel clunky or they don't feel like they stick. They feel pretty similar to the, the camera itself. And then we've got the lock, unlock for the functions on the grip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little protective cap off here and I'm going to put it on the camera. So we'll put it in there. Alright, oops. So we'll give it a quick tighten here. Start right trying to do this a little close to the camera, so <clears throat> tighten that up. Okay, got that nice and tight. So So it looks like it fits pretty tight around here. Um, I've never had a Nikon grip for this particular camera. However, I have seen pictures of them. Um, you know, this is pretty typical for the uh, grip portion to stick out from the camera just a little, but the gaps look pretty, pretty standard. Like I don't see any, you know, light through the other end. I don't see any holes. It's more of a this doesn't follow the complete body line, but from the pictures I've seen of the actual grip, um, the uh, <clears throat> OEM grip does not either. So correct me if I'm wrong or if you have any additional information on that, but it looks pretty similar to the standard grip. Um, so we'll get this turned on once I get a battery in here. So uh, it looks like it came shipped with the traditional battery um, insert available, so I'll pull that out. It's got a little lock. comes out nice and easy, so that's good. Uh, it doesn't feel loose, though. It just feels like it comes out without having to tug on it or force it. So I got a battery here. Give this a little bit of a push. Whoop. So you'll depress this here, and that seems like it'll hold it in place. I'll slide it back in. And whoop, 
I got the lock out there crooked. And then we'll give it a, a lock. Feels nice and secure, not going anywhere unless I pull that tab. And let's see if we have this working. All right, turn the camera on. All right, so we get the camera working. So we'll turn it this way. And first I'll check the shutter speed here and looks like we get responses. We're not skipping any numbers. There's no delay, so that seems to be working well. We'll check our uh, depth of field here. Looks like it's responding adequately. Again, tactile response is very good. Um, we'll open up the menu here and check the joystick. So down, down, up, up, left, right, right. And if we want to hit enter, so uh, all this seems pretty responsive, at least right out of the box. Um, good tactile response, good feel out of the buttons. Okay, so to begin with, I actually didn't even have this button programmed, but I want to go through programming the one on the, um, the grip just to make sure that it's working. So we're going to go into the menu. And we're going to go into controls, and there is a specific area in the controls for the uh, assign MD, MBD15 button here. And I'm just going to turn it on um, just to make sure that it responds. So theoretically, if I'm in the uh, information screen, if I hit that button, it should turn the info screen off and it'll respond in the viewfinder, but you're not going to be able to see that here. So I'll hit the button and it looks like it's responding appropriately and I can hear the focus activating as I press that button. So it is working. Um, so all the functions on this grip are working pretty well. Um, no real complaints yet. Obviously it's just out of the box. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to check something that I've seen some criticism on on other aftermarket battery grips, and that's being able to change the battery order from the grip to the uh, primary camera battery or vice versa to see which one it will draw from first. Uh, I've seen some complaints that even though you can change it in the menu, it reverts um, to the grip battery. So we will go ahead and we will open up our menu here, and we are going to go to Controls and we are going to go up to battery order and right now it is set to MBD15 battery first I can switch down to use camera battery first and now what we will do is we'll go down to the wrench here and we will um, whoop, go down to the wrench and we will scroll down to battery information and this yellow rectangle will indicate where your primary battery pull is coming from so right now it's the D7200. So I will go back and I will change that custom setting back to the grip and uh, ensure that uh, that setting was actually saved and processes. So we'll switch it back to the grip and we'll go back to the wrench here, back to battery information. And you can see the yellow rectangle is around the uh, grip uh, model number here. So it looks like every single function thus far is working. So another complaint people have had about aftermarket grips of different brands is the grip itself being a little bit too narrow. So this is your standard grip on the uh, camera. And if I turn it here, this grip actually is just a touch wider. Um, so you get a nice, good, secure grip on it. It helps add weight. I know the other thing that people have mentioned is that... Um, the weight of the aftermarket grip, if it's like a you know cheap, cheaper plastic, it makes your uh, camera a little bit lopsided or the weight is not quite evenly distributed. It feels pretty good in my hands. Uh, I, I like the weight distribution. It feels pretty similar. Um, you know, again, it's a little bit camera heavy, but I, I think it would be on the, the typical grip. But it's not so noticeable that you have to really worry about that kind of counterbalance. So. Um, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way that the, the grip feels. Um, 
I like the way that it works right now. You know, I will definitely use this camera and I will update with any um, new information that I get about the grip or if any failures or um, comments or criticisms if they arise. But right now, you know, this, this is something I'd give this probably four and a half to five stars. Um, this particular grip was $72, I believe, on Amazon. So it's more expensive than some of the aftermarket grips that usually run between $30 and $50. But to be honest with you, I think it's worth the extra expenditure. Um, in terms of the aftermarket grip, this is probably one of the more expensive ones. But you kind of feel it in the quality. It works. I mean, even just little touches like this um, and the contour and feeling like all the seam work here is uh, it's pretty solid. If you can see where, you know, the mating area between the grip and the uh, the body of, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, rubberized portion of the grip and the body of the grip itself, um, you know, there's no gaps, there's no spaces, there's no uneven cuts. I mean, this is this is a pretty quality looking. Uh, grip to me. Uh, I've seen some other reviews and pictures of some of the cheaper ones and uh, I'm happy. So um, I would recommend it. I will leave a link to the Velo Grip, uh, an Amazon link. So if you want to take a look at the specs yourself, it might be something you want to look into to save a little bit of money uh, on the uh, original equipment Nikon grip because this is about a third of the price. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks for watching my video on the Velo uh, BGN11 aftermarket grip for the Nikon D7200. I hope this review was helpful for you. Um, I think I've delivered a pretty decent option for those of you who want to save a little bit of money and grab the grip, uh, extend your battery life. Uh, I am definitely pleased with the... Uh, you know, my first impression so far. So if any of you have any particular experience with the Velo Grip, please leave your comments, criticisms, concerns, uh, any personal experiences in the comments below. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.